joints on the left, shit, live in the hills, but I still get a spread. Started with a little, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm not gonna waste any time with this. Everything that happened in the market today, it was absolutely crazy, and I need to make this clear. It was all the BMRP, the big money rug pull. That is it. Like the video. I'll see you on stream. Peace out, Chad. All right, Chad, I'm just messing around, but seriously, I want you to understand this. The moves in the market today, I'm going to go through all of it, but what you saw today, it was an earnings move. Keep this in mind for the next coming weeks here because as you're watching the market go up and down, do not be dramatic about the movements and just get ready. There will be days where we're going to get one report and then sit there and digest and do nothing until the next reports come out and then just think about all the stock. People are waiting for these earnings reports to really start putting money on the table or start taking it off. So we really need to start with that here. I do have three different earning plays that I want to go over. But right now in the market, there is so much that we need to cover. But just don't underestimate earnings where there is a lot of focus. And now on top of that, today was actually one of the lowest volume days. And the reason is Europe is still closed because of Easter. So we got a lot to talk about. I got the place for you. I have all of the news and then really we need to talk about what is going to happen this week again i got earnings plays and that is important but now you are also getting the fed and what we got with bullard after hours this is really key so drop your thumbs up on the video make sure you're subscribed and chad i'll see you there in the morning youtube.com slash the stock market i'm getting hyped okay and this one y'all were talking about the nba i got the lamello jersey i thought it was fitting i've never gotten to wear this so now now we in the game baby let's go let's go but but as far as today, let's just go over what happened. One, commodities were very important with the lack of volume because of Europe and Australia closed. That really took the big focus. Oil, the price of any of the grains, again, even some of the metals and coal, they all went up. And that was the big focus, even though tech didn't do that bad. And surprisingly, a lot of the defensive sold off. But now let me give you the headlines. The first thing I think it started with odds of U.S. recession. It was Goldman Sachs and they pretty much said there is a 35% chance of a recession in the next few years. This is how we started the market. And then China, their GDP, that was not good at all. The consumer spending was down and then some of their other data, but it was overall bad. And then this one gets even worse. If you guys remember the amount of ships that were stuck in like Long Beach and everybody would take pictures. Well, in China, there is over 10 times the amount of ships. It's literally like 500 ships that are just waiting at the poor unable to unload so it's a big supply chain issue their economic data is highlighting it you even saw the china stocks today but that was not good and then on top of it even dd they announced that what in may they're going to be taking a vote from shareholders to delist from the nyse so that wasn't good and then on top of it you had more oil news so oil and commodities were kind of already doing their thing but then you actually had a, a protest in libya and it led to all of these issues and ports closing but now i believe it's like a million and a half barrels a day just gone from the market simply because of libya and then that added to some things and then in the middle of all of it again people are getting ready for earnings banks did good and people reacted and then there's other little events there's also like elon musk again he tweeted out early this morning uh hinting at a tender offer he quoted a elvis song but then after hours even apollo said they are willing to back one of his bids this is gonna get even crazier Crazier. Again, a lot of people have been talking about this, but this is kind of how we started off the morning and then leading into tomorrow. This was kind of after hours. We had two different events, but you're going to hear this one tomorrow. The IMF, they have downgraded the global outlook, so we might get some response, but a Goldman note and then that we're going to see and then Fed Bullard. I was going to really talk about this a lot and this is going to be now the main point for the rest of the week. Again, I'm going to go over the earnings plays, but you guys got to really understand right now that people are waiting for earnings these ups and downs in the market it will be caused by earnings and then now the fed and all of these fed speakers into powell powell on thursday is really going to move the markets but now all of these speakers 
it might confuse us. So pretty much Bullard, he came out after hours. He said that more than a 50 basis point increase is not his base case. But now a lot of people started saying, well, that's bullish. That's bullish. B uh, Bullard is usually dovish or he's usually hawkish. This is kind of bullish. But then it got followed up with Fed Bullard says a 75 basis point hike could be an option, but he doesn't want to do it. So pretty much what I want you to understand is that Bullard is the most hawkish. And I think leading into Powell, Powell is probably going to guarantee the double rate hike. And remember, a couple months ago, double rate hike was like, oh, my gosh, that's so bad. Oh, my gosh. How's the market going to take it? Big money rug pull. Ah, So people were freaking out about that. But now think about that here coming into the meeting where Powell is about to confirm. 50 basis points I think Bullard and some of the other people they may start kind of projecting a little bit ahead but essentially what I'm trying to say is that how the market gets tempered leading into Powell that is going to be very very key over the next few days and that is going to be something to watch and then Powell on Thursday if he confirms that double rate hike I mean we're going to see maybe the market catches up with bonds but we are going to find out here but on top of that it's all going to be earnings that's kind of everything that we got today but there was a lot again what's going on in China from lockdowns to economic data what's going on with commodities oil energy and don't forget some of them are reporting this week and then on top of that you have everybody just talking about what's the Fed gonna do how does it relate to recession how do we handle inflation how do we handle policy all of those and then even affecting bonds those were the main keys for today so let us get into the plays but as far as the plays I got three different ones that I'm looking at. The first one is going to be Tesla. So I was looking at these options April 29th and then even May. There's like the 1250s and then these ones are a little bit further out there. But essentially, if you look at the 14 day options, all of the premium has dropped on Tesla. So what I'm looking for, pre-earnings run up. I've got clapped on Facebook. I got clapped on Netflix already, but I may be willing to do it with Netflix uh, or excuse me, Tesla. But what's going to happen here? They report here on Wednesday. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Day and even the day of, we might have an opportunity. The idea is if the premiums have stayed stable or have gotten really cheap, the idea would be buy them before earnings, let the premium go up leading into earnings, and then flip out of them and then we are done so like i said i've already got clapped on two of these gonna keep my eye out for that one but that is the first one second play this one they have earnings here on wednesday as well too i really like it it applies to everything you saw in the market today and what is actually getting hot alcoa they have earnings on wednesday they're kind of waking up a little bit the options are expensive for anything with time and that's what i'm a little worried about or you got to be careful for the out of the monies again it's a little bit harder and if we We've learned anything from like the UNG plays and some of the like EWJs or anything that is like country related, the near the monies have paid off very, very well. So watch out for that. But the chain is a little difficult, but I really like it. Pre earnings play. It's related to everything going good. I don't know how the earnings will do, but I really think that could be a good one to watch. And then finally, Abbott, they're in the morning on Wednesday. So pretty much tomorrow would really be the only time to play it but they are reporting remember abbott that is the father and mother they the Abby Vice spun off from Abbott. I don't know how it relates in the terms of the nuclear family, but you get what I'm saying. Anyways, Abbott, I really like them. I got clapped on an older play, but they've been going up there. It's been one of those value dividend plays, so I am going to look for something pre-earnings and the pre-earnings run-up, and I'm going to try to keep it closer to the money, but those are the main three plays as far as everything else. I sold out of two more of these UNGs. Again, it was 500%. Cut a little bit out at 350 on Friday. Got one more left. UNG's crazy, so Watch it out for that. I did make a MasterCard, and I went with the April 29th. So this one didn't spend too much. It did go down. They were up in the morning, but I may want to double dip or, again, get more. And the idea of this play, American Express is on Friday. So I'm thinking, okay, I could get some of the pre-run-up. If AXP does good, it might be able to feed into the earnings here with MasterCard. So that's why I got that. As far as any other plays, didn't make any other ones. Didn't really close out. I did close out one of those Babas. That one went up 50% from a couple weeks ago. The Yang 
Kings came back to life, the EWJs. Uh, I'm trying to think what also got clapped. The Airbnb got clapped, and then even Roblox. I'm actually even double dipping. I might want to double dip. I've been looking at that, and then I pretty much think that's it. If as far as anything else, I'm really going to be watching commodities, wheat, and corn this week. I still have that future, but corn hit its highest level since like 2012, but that one's a big deal. I pretty much think seasonally could be a good week or two, and then I may want to close the corn trade out and then ride a little bit of the wheat and TD Ameritrade has reopened up the commodities for wheat or the futures trading. So keep that in mind, but that's all I'm going to be riding out. I will be also looking at banks leading into the Fed possibly or Powell on Thursday, but we will see what happens. Other than that, it's going to be all about earnings, pre-earnings, post-earnings, and it's earnings season, baby. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need your rumber. Ain't nobody going to give it to you, baby. You're going to earn it through value and through service, baby. Let's go. That's good. I like it with the basketball. I'm ready to go. Okay, I thought it was going to end naturally, but I, I love you, Chad. Happy Monday. Let's go. Oh. <laughs>